Brian Johnson is constantly pushing the limits in terms of using his body as a guinea pig. Today, we're gonna to take a look at what he's doing to stimulate hair growth. So genetically, I should be bald. I started to lose my hair and go gray in my late 20s. I'm now 46. It's been a lot of hard work to keep the hair I have. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through my protocol, what I do on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Now, Brian is correct. Hair loss can be genetic. In Brian's case, if we look at a photo of his father, you can actually tell that his father has pretty significant hair loss. So this is why Brian probably thinks that his hair loss is genetic. Now, I do wanna emphasize that hair loss is polygenetic. It can be impacted from either your mother's side or your father's side or a combination of both. Androgenetic alopecia is the most common form of hair loss, causing your hair follicles to be more sensitive to dihydrotestosterone, DHT, a major contributor to hair loss. This is the type of hair loss that Brian is experiencing. Now it's important to note that the best time to work on your hair is before you start losing it. A lot of people wait until they start seeing a lot of shedding. Don't wait, start doing hair care immediately. Now, if you're in your early 20s, mid 20s, good time to start taking note that it's important. Otherwise, it's harder to catch it when you're already done that path. So this is correct. Going on medical therapy at a young age is the ideal approach, especially if you have androgenetic alopecia. So if you're a teenager, early 20s, that's the best time to start using either minoxidil, finasteride, or dutasteride. Now, with that said, you could still start medical therapy later in life, in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, and the medication will still work to help preserve the follicles that you have on your scalp. However, if you lost any follicles, this is not going to regrow those follicles. So any follicles lost can't be rediscovered. So that's why starting medical therapy at a young age is really critically important if you wanna preserve the follicles on your scalp. Now, I do this all the time. I treat young patients, male patients uh, specifically, who are going through androgenetic alopecia, and they have phenomenal results. They have fathers or grandfathers that are completely bald, and in their 30s, they still have their hair because they started their medical therapy young. First thing I do in the morning every day is I wear this red light therapy cap. It has 312 laser diodes. You put on the head, you turn it on, it's battery powered. And so I can walk about and do my morning routine without having to sit down. It increases uh, blood flow and also stimulates hair follicle activity. The studies on this are pretty good. It's not the most powerful treatment we do, but still it's part of the stack. And so all these little things add up. So every day, six minutes. So there are a few names for this. LLT therapy, red light therapy. It's a great non-invasive approach if you don't want to use medicine. Now it works by stimulating cellular activity as well as blood circulation to the hair follicles. Now you have to be consistent when you use red light therapy because number one, it takes anywhere from four to six months to just start working. And if you stop using it, all the benefits are completely lost. Now I do think Brian's being a little too aggressive using this cap every single day because you can develop a hypersensitivity reaction. My recommendation is to use this two to three times a week for 30 minute sessions. The next thing I do is I apply this topical to my scalp on a daily basis. You've probably heard of it, of topicals like Rogaine and Minoxidil 5%. Both are effective. We added a bunch of other goodies to our topical formulation. We found it in the evidence and then we had a, a local compounded pharmacy make it for us. So we've published this recipe and you can take that recipe, share it with the compounded pharmacy and have them make it for you. Let's take a closer look at this medication that Brian compounded for his hair loss. Now, I do want to emphasize this medication is not going to readily be available. You will need a specific prescription from your physician. There's a bunch of ingredients in this formulation that I find very interesting. The two, though, that really, really, really stick out are finasteride and minoxidil. And that's because these two medications are the only ones that are FDA approved to treat hair loss. Now, finasteride is important because it blocks 5-alpha reductase. And when you block that enzyme, you decrease the amount of DHT in your bloodstream. And DHT, as we discussed before, is a major contributor to hair loss. Minoxidil is also important because it increases the antigen phase of the hair. That's the growth phase. And it increases blood circulation as well as oxygen delivery to the hair follicles. Now, the question is, how important are the other ingredients in this formulation? 
when I take a close look at this list and I see caffeine, azelaic acid, melatonin, rosemary oil, there are merits to using these ingredients to address hair loss. Without going into specific detail about how each item works, because I have made an entire video on organic hair solutions that work and don't work, what I could tell you is that they're addressing different causes of hair loss and they're doing everything to address ways to stimulate new hair growth. So by using these items, you're increasing blood flow circulation to the scalp. You're decreasing inflammation. You're using antioxidants, antimicrobials, so that you improve the scalp health. You are increasing the antigen growth phase of the hair, decreasing the floating DHT, which is a major contributor to hair loss. The big takeaway though, is that by using multiple ingredients, you're addressing different causes of hair loss. To enhance the benefits of the topicals, this and others, is we do microneedling. Uh, we've been not consistent with this. So we did it for a while and then we did so many things in the blueprint protocol, it kind of got pushed out. So we think it's efficacious. We think it's also a good thing. Uh, we were also a little worried because I was doing uh, so many things for my hair. I was doing PRP and microneedling and we were a bit worried that I was causing too much trauma to my scalp. So studies do support using a microneedling device or a dermal roller at home in combination with minoxidil therapy does lead to better results for hair growth compared to just doing minoxidil alone. I do wanna caution you though, that if you're thinking about doing this at home, don't do this more than every other day and don't use a microneedling device with a needle that's uh, longer than 0.5 millimeters because you will cause potentially a scarring alopecia and cause more trauma to your scalp than necessary. Also be cautious if you're already doing procedures on your scalp like PRP, which is an in-office procedure that uses your own platelets to stimulate hair growth um, because you don't wanna have too much micro trauma to the scalp that's not going to help your hair growth, it's actually going to make it a lot worse. Then also, there's just some basic stuff like uh, being careful with your hair, you know, not combing too hard, not uh, pulling really hard at the follicles. It's delicate, uh, so just being mindful about that. Uh, not having hair pulling fights, you know, that's not a good thing for hair care. So this is a myth. Uh, you can comb your hair as much as you want. If your hair is going to fall out, it's because your hair is in the telogen resting phase. Um, it was going to fall out regardless. But one point that I will emphasize that he is correct about is don't get into a hair pulling fight. Um, there's something called traction alopecia. If you pull your hair back too tightly into a braid, this can cause hair loss. So just be careful in terms of how you style your hair. I started going gray by my mid to late thirties. I was basically all gray. And so Blueprint, we have been trying to reverse it and we've tried a lot of things. The first year of this effort, we were largely unsuccessful. Over the past uh, year, we've been successful. Now, many people have said, I dye my hair. I actually don't. Uh, going to the salon, using a chemical process. I did that before in my 30s. I haven't done that for the past year or so. So I'm going to show you the two formulations I use. One of them has an herbal extract, which has a color, and that's what you see in my hair. But what's compelling to me, again, is we biopsied my hair. We looked at it under the microscope, and we see that the hair, the color is being produced beneath the scalp. So it's actually working. So let me show you the two things we use. One is a GR7. This is a company in the UK that makes this. This is applied, I do this uh, three or four times a week. In addition to GR7 is uh, my Rocky. This is the one that has the herbal extract that has some color as part of the formulation. I use these in tandem. So I apply the GR7 a few times a week. This maybe once or twice a week. And again, if you look at my follicles underneath the microscope, I've increased the production of, of color in my hair. So we like where it's going. Now, Brian's trying to figure out how to reverse the grain process of our hair. But the fact is that we just simply lose melanin as we age in our hair follicles. There's a lot of research going on in this field, trying to crack this code. Believe it or not, people want to look youthful and they want to have colorful hair and they don't want to continue to have to dye their hair into their elder years. We haven't cracked it yet. I believe we will, but the evidence is not out there yet. Everything I'm talking about seems overwhelming. You can start with the basic. This hair formulation, just 5% minoxidil, Rogaine, 
is a really good place to start. You can get them at uh, any number of places they sell it. You don't need the longer formulation that I have. You can do the simple one and that will really help you get started. My first recommendation if you're experiencing hair loss is to consider using minoxidil. Now you can get this as a liquid or foam form over the counter. I made an entire video about minoxidil. I certainly encourage you to watch it. But what I want to emphasize is that both men and women can go on 5% minoxidil. And I prefer the foam form because it's less sensitive to the scalp. So yes, minoxidil is a great place to start. We just started a new therapy using exosomes. So actually we're using Tixel, uh, which is a skincare uh, system and also uh, exosomes. So we open up the, the channels in the hair and in the, in the scalp and then we put the exosomes. So we're gonna see the efficacy of that. I really believe that Brian is pushing the limits of what is safe here. Number one, the FDA has not cleared this. Number two, exosomes potentially could be cancerous and modify your genome. I would not recommend this to patients. I caution you against getting exosome therapy to try to stimulate hair growth. I think there's a lot of other great therapies to explore that have benefits. Exosomes are one therapy I would tell you to stay away from. There's a lot we can learn about Brian, but we must be careful. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you have any questions about hair loss, leave your comments below. Please subscribe to our channel. We're trying to grow our community. And as always, I'm here on your journey to help you grow hair.